Lord, there is none like you All of my days I want to praise The wonders of your mighty love My comfort, my shelter Tower of refuge and strength let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the sea. Of your name I sing for joy at the work of your hands Forever I love you, forever I'll stand Nothing compares to the promise I have in Good morning. Our first reading is from the 17th chapter of Acts, verses 16 through 31. Now while Paul was waiting for Silas and Timothy at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him. And some said, What does this babbler wish to say? Others said, He seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities, because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? For you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling and hearing something new. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind, to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine things is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Here ends the reading. Our second reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13-22. through 22. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, 
always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, for being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers, having been subjected to him. Here ends the reading. This is the message for the sixth weekend of Easter, and we're mainly looking at the uh, gospel reading for this for this weekend. Uh, it's a continuation of the reading of John chapter 14. We begin with the 15th verse. Uh, let's listen to that and then go from there. Our gospel today is taken from the 14th chapter of John, verses 15 through 21. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay. Uh, hopefully you heard mainly the first verse right now. Uh, chapter 14 of the Gospel of John, in verse 15 it says, He, Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. My commandments, and to keep them. Uh, looking that word up in the Greek and other dictionaries, uh, it can mean not only doing the commandment, but to laying up, uh, to preserve, to keep careful watching over the commandments. And, and what are the commandments that Jesus has given us? Um, surely, in a way, he's talking about the law and the prophets and what we would call the Hebrew scriptures or the Old Testament. You remember in, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said that uh, he hasn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And if anybody uh, relaxes one of these commandments, um, uh, he will be uh, least in the kingdom of heaven. Uh, so uh, surely he is at least mentioning or hinting to the law and the prophets of what we would call the Old Testament. But I'm interested in, in what did Jesus command? What, what was that? Well, if you remember, um, a Pharisee came to Jesus and asked him what uh, was the greatest of the commandments. And Jesus answered, um, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depends all the law and the prophets. Love God and love your neighbor. And then 
I think more particularly for the Gospel of John, we have the continuation of Jesus' discourse, as it's called, message to his disciples, uh, and uh, continuing in, in John chapter 15, where Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have co- loved you. And he says that later on uh, in chapter 15. And the word does not mean feel fuzzy and nice about someone, uh, but the word is agape. And agape can be defined as self-sacrificing concern for another. You may not have warm and fuzzy feelings for someone, but you can have sacrificing concerns for them. I think of in this time of this coronavirus, uh, all the frontline workers in hospitals and other places uh, may not have warm and fuzzy feelings for all the patients that are in distress, but they are sacrificing themselves. And we were told this morning on a prayer chain through uh, St. Paul Lutheran Church Clive that there was a member, a person that used to be a member there that was a nurse in Cleveland that has contracted uh, COVID-19 because she worked on patients. Self-sacrificing concern for another And of course, through the Gospel of John, we see that enacted in Jesus as he gives his life for all people, for all people. And we're asked to do that, and we're asked to love Jesus, if you continue on that Gospel. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Um, I stumbled across the quote from St. Augustine, a uh, neat guy, and Luther was an Augustinian monk, and he quoted Augustine a lot. And this is from Augustine's treatise number 74 on this gospel. Now, Augustine was the bishop of Hippo, which is now Algeria, in Algeria, and he was the bishop there around the year 400 for about 25 years or so. And And Augustine said, how can we love so as to receive him, without whom we cannot love at all? Or how shall we keep the commandments so as to receive him, without whom we have no power to keep them? (laughs) I love that circular thinking. I can't love him unless I know him, and I can't do the commandments unless I love him, and I can't love him unless he loves me first, (laughs) is actually what he's saying. And a sign of, uh, of faithfulness uh, to Jesus and his teaching, his commands, it is to love God and love others, it would seem. And following up on that uh, quote from Augustine, that uh, Jesus knew that we were helpless by ourselves. And so he says in verse 16, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Now, helper is what our translator said. The Greek word is parakletos, or paraklete, or parakletos. Uh, Some people interpret this as intercessor, counselor, advocate, comforter. Um, It actually could refer to somebody, the literal meaning for that, is someone that is called to your side, um, especially one who comes to your aid, uh, somebody that pleads your case maybe before a judge. So we can call him a counselor for the defense, a legal assistant, an advocate. Um, So Jesus is sending another person to help us to be able to do the commandments. And he calls it, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth. Um, it's amazing in this political uh, system we're in right now. It's been going on for years. Uh, there's the need to ch- fact check. Uh, we have things called fake news. Um, I'm amazed, I'm really amazed 
at the ignorance of people and some of the things that come out of their mouths. Uh, some people say something to a news uh, show, and then they contradict it in sessions in Congress. Um, what? What is the truth? Well, looking up that word in the Bible, I knew it was aletheia or halethia, um, and it just in my dictionaries for Greek said it was meaning was truth. But I found this um, this definition, uh, understanding the Bible in its own time and in ours by David Ewart in 2011. He says, the underlining Greek word, which is translated into English as truth, is a halethia in Greek, an initial letter A, or alpha, is like our English UN, or un. Lethia, or lethia, is the river in Greek mythology that the dead drink from in Hades in order to forget their past. And so, a lethia, or a lethia, what we call truth, has the sense of waking up, remembering, overcoming oblivion or stupor, being alive and vital, not being deceived by false ideas or desires or schemes, seeing what is actually there or what actually is. And we have some pictures that some artists have rendered of the goddess Aletheia. And there is about a 30-second video of Lethia or Lethia. Aletheia, from the idea of forgetfulness, um, seems to me that a lot of people are drinking from that river. And, um, and there is the quote from George Santiana, uh, Santiana uh, those who forget history are condemned to repeat it. It's attributed to him. It actually, an accurate quote is, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Um, and it is amazing to me, and many, many things politically, economically, and socially, um, that people maybe not forget, they never learn. Um, it, it's absolutely amazing. The, um, I've seen television shows where the MC has gone out in public and interviewed people about things in American history. Uh, who won the Civil War? And he would, and they would say, England? <laughs> Germany? <laughs> and some of these were on college campuses. Uh, you know, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, they maybe never had that history. But what about in church? What about those who count themselves as Christians? Um, there is a prayer for today that I hope that uh, will be read to you that talks about being reminded about Jesus, his promise, his commands uh, that's available for us today. Let us pray. O oh God, all good things can come from you alone. Generously consider then our humble prayers. Inspire us to consider what is true and direct us to accomplish what is right. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The prayer for the day said to consider uh, what is true and direct us to do what is right through Jesus. Um, and Jesus says he'll send us the spirit of truth 
the one that um, will have us remember. And, and Jesus used that word remember in the scriptures. In Luke, it says, uh, he took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Surely one of the most important things we can do as Christians is remember Jesus. In this passage of Scripture, the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. And again, chapter 16, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper, helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. The contemporary version, uh, English version of that says, the Spirit will come and show the people of the world the truth about sin and God's righteous judgment. So one of, one of the processes or the things that, that the Holy Spirit does uh, bring to our remembrance is that we're sinners, uh, that we all fall short of the glory of God, according to Romans chapter 3. Um, and, and it's pretty hard for people to admit that they're wrong. Um, it's someone else's fault. Or, or I did this because somebody forced me to, or because I'm entitled to it, or because I'm a certain racial type, or not a certain racial type. Um, identity uh, politics or um, excuses. Uh, very seldom uh, uh, do we hear people saying, I'm wrong. I, I should not have done that. Not that I made a mistake. Uh, that's sort of squirreling out of it. Uh, but, you know, I'm a sinful person. Uh, that's tough for many, many people, and it seems to be tougher all the time now in our life together. Uh, it tells us, the Holy Spirit uh, tells us that we are a sinner, that we fall short of the glory of God, and bring to our remembrance um, the things that we have done that we should not have done, and have not done the things that we should have done. Uh, not going to that river, Lathia, in uh, Greek mythology, to forget that. It seems that people have already done that. John chapter 5. Truly I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has, that's present tense, eternal life. He does not come into judgment but has passed from death unto life. Are you sure you're going to go to heaven is a question. Many people say, I'm not sure. Well, it seems that the Holy Spirit has come to us to assure us of that. And not only in John, but in other places in the scripture as well, through the letters of St. Paul, he has eternal life those who believe in me. It's fascinating. Um, the thing about sin, I've known people that have said that they can't come to church uh, because they're too bad of a sinner. And I wanted to tell them, you think you're greater than God and his forgiveness? Uh, you're putting yourself mightier than God, saying you can sin and God can't do anything about it. Uh, okay, uh, that seems to be uh, making yourself greater than God. Um, I remember as we have just gone through uh, Lent and Holy Week, uh, one of the sayings from the cross, um, the thief turns to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me. And that's neat. That goes back, as far as I can tell, to what I quoted from St. Augustine. I can't do it unless Jesus does it first for me, is how I understand that. And the important thing is 
that Jesus tells the thief, today you'll be with me in paradise. You remember that song? We sing it often when we receive Holy Communion. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Let's listen to part of that. come into your kingdom. And I like that idea. It's Jesus remembering me. And it helps to have the 18th verse of our gospel reading today. I will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you as orphan, orphans. And later on, uh, beyond our text in verses 19 and 20, you will see me because I live you will live also. In that day you will know that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. That's closeness. That's oneness. That's real relationship. And, and that means we're not orphans. We're not alone. He's with us and he is remembering us. Oh, happy day. No longer do I call you servants, Jesus says in chapter 15. For the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I will call you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Friends. We're talking about relationship. Not just doing uh, commandments in order that we not get punished but doing commandments because we know it's healthy, good for us, and Jesus wants us uh, to know his love and grace, and we grow as we follow in his footsteps. Uh, there is this uh, illustration from a pastor uh, in Faith Lutheran Church, Marysville, California. Uh, he has commentaries on, um, online. And in talking about this idea of being friends with Jesus, uh, and this passage from 14th chapter of, uh, of John, he talks about this true story. One day I was stopped for speeding. I knew I was wrong. I was late for a meeting. I was driving on a brand new four-lane highway with almost no traffic. When I saw those flashing lights behind me, I knew I was going to be even later for my meeting. After the patrolman got my license, he went back to his car. I waited for him to return with a judgment against my sin. As I waited, another police car pulled up behind the first. The man with my license went back to the second car. My anxiety level was rising. He left the second car and came back to my car. He manned, handed me my license and said, the sergeant says that you're a friend of his. Keep your speed down and drive carefully. He returned to his car and drove off, and so did I. I was guilty. I had broken the law. I deserved a ticket. I deserved to pay the fine. But because of a friendship, my mistake was forgiven and forgotten was a mistake. It was a willingly done. There was no penalty of pay. That is grace. I thank the sergeant who was a member of my congregation. Note that his comment on the other officer was that I was a friend of his. This is the idea. Not that he was a friend of mine, but I was a friend of his. Salvation is based on Jesus considering us his friends, not orphans, but people who are one with him. Wow. Jesus is the one who declares us his friends and frees us from the eternal consequences of our sin. The Holy Spirit of truth 
keeps us mindful of this grace. And I love this scripture. Hopefully everybody will keep it in mind and not drink from the river of forgetfulness as it seems so many people have. With that in mind, let us go to the prayer of the church for this Sunday. Let us pray for the Comforter, the Advocate. Holy God, your Son Jesus promised to the first disciples that he would send them a Comforter in the Holy Spirit. Grant that we would be filled with that same Spirit, that our faith would burn like fire, and that we would take the good news into the world with joy and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the peace of the world. God of all peace, grant us your peace, which passes all understanding. Fill our hearts with such a calm that we would be able to calm others with your love. Remind us of your never-failing promises of your abiding presence in our lives in the life of this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the suffering Healing God, Jesus suffered greatly in his life so that we might have peace, wholeness, and new life. Be with all those this day who are struggling with their health. Bring renewal to their minds, bodies, and spirit in the name of Jesus who poured himself out for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all public servants and our military. Almighty God, we ask your watchful eye to be over all of those who serve in our armed forces and those who serve the public every day. We especially pray for our first responders and those in health care services. Keep them safe from harm. Give them wise judgment as well as courage in the face of troubles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else that you see that we need, Lord, grant us through your love and grace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The promise that Jesus gave in John chapter 14, the passage that we have read and talked about, is ours through faith in his victory over sin, death, and the devil. A person recently asked me, how are you? And I said, I'm happy and glad that the tomb is empty. Hallelujah. The song, one of my favorites, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Risen our victorious head. Sing his praises. Alleluia. and tears. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is risen, all the sadness of our Lenten fast is o'er. of gladness he returns to life once more death and hell before him bending see him rise the victor now angels on his steps attending glory round his wounded brow Christ is risen alleluia risen our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is risen, all the sorrow that last evening round him lay. Thou hast found a glorious morrow in the rising Give 
spring, springing up from holy ground. He was dead, but now is living. He was lost, but he is found. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is risen, henceforth never, death or hell shall us enthrall. Be we Christ in him forever, we have triumphed over all. All the doubting and dejection of our trembling hearts have ceased. Hail the day of resurrection, let us rise and keep the feast. Christ is risen, alleluia. Risen our victorious head, sing his praises.